The first Saturday in May, Derby Day. The sun shines bright on the crowds in their big old hats. The sound of horse hooves thunder and ice cold mint juleps are in every person's... Oh wait, Derby Day's been postponed until September. Well, no mind. We can still enjoy the signature drink of the fastest two minutes in sports, the mint julep. Hi, I'm Leah Lane. I'm the curator of collections for Preservation Virginia. In this video, we'll explore the backstory of this minty concoction and then try our hand at making one ourselves. And as it turns out, the history of the mint julep takes us far from the bluegrass, across centuries and continents, right here to the city of Richmond, Virginia. And as a native Kentuckian, this hurts a little to say, but our story does not initially involve bourbon. David Wandrick has extensively explored the story of the mint julep, and I encourage you to check out his book, Imbibe, to learn more about this and the history of other spirited beverages. The word julep has its origins in Persian. Julub is a term for rose water. The first known record of a julep is from the Kitab al-Mansuri, a Persian medical text dated to about 900 CE. Brought by Arab physicians to Europe, it was a word applied to medicinal drinks involving herbs and sugar, and occasionally a dash of something distilled. But the pleasant combination of sugar and herbs gradually moved from the realm of medicine to the world of the mixologist. Wendrick has identified the first printed reference to the julep right here in a January 1770 issue of Williamsburg's Virginia Gazette. The mint part of the story was quick on its heels. In July 1793, a Reverend Tomlin in Norfolk, Virginia, observed that host offered, quote, a tumbler of rum and water, well sweetened, with a slip of mint in it. Wait, rum? Yes, my friends, rum. Not bourbon or even whiskey. The distillation of these spirits hadn't reached the pleasing qualities we know today, and rum was widely available. As the 19th century progressed, brandy became part of the equation. Bourbon appears later in our story. Whatever was anchoring his julep mix, one particular Chief Justice of the Supreme Court was a fan, John Marshall. Marshall was a member of the Coit's Club in Richmond, which involved as much imbibing mint juleps and punch as it did slinging iron or brass rings over a stake, somewhat similar to horseshoes. The mastermind of the beverages served at these gatherings was Jasper Crouch, a free man of color who was also legendary for his barbecue prowess. Now, I hate to admit this, but the mint juleps Jasper Crouch crafted for the Coit's Club were probably rum or brandy based. They might have been served in a silver or pewter beaker, a form affectionately known today as a julep cup. The crushed ice frosts over the outside of the metal cup, which is one of the most beautiful sights on a hot summer day. Word to the wise, if you get the chance to drink out of a proper julep cup slash beaker, hold it at the rim or the base so you don't disturb this arctic blanket. Bourbon really hits its stride by the mid-19th century. Kentucky's most famous politician, the Hanover County, Virginia-born Henry Clay, even wrote his own recipe for a bourbon mint julep in his journals. Clay's language reveals his reverence for this drink. The mint leaves, fresh and tender, should be pressed against a coin silver goblet with the back of a silver spoon. Only bruise the leaves gently, and then remove them from the goblet, half fill with cracked ice. Mellow bourbon, aged in oaken barrels, is poured from the jigger and allowed to slide slowly through the cracked ice. In another receptacle, granulated sugar is slowly mixed into chilled limestone water to make a silvery mixture as smooth as some rare Egyptian oil, then poured on top of the ice. While beads of moisture gather on the burnished exterior of the silver goblet, garnish the brim of the goblet with the choicest sprigs of mint. As much as I want to make this version of a mint julep, I'm going to go back to the style probably used by Jasper Crouch, with rum and brandy. The ingredients are pretty simple here. This is for one drink, and I'll put the recipe in the description. We need five mint leaves, or more, and an optional additional one sprig for garnish. You'll need one and a half tablespoons of simple syrup, and I usually have a little bit of granulated sugar as well. It gives a little bit of grit to work with. You want one ounce of rum, 
two ounces of brandy, and crushed ice. If you don't have this little luxury, take the time to imitate it. Put normal ice between clean dish towels and have at it with a hammer or a pot. Controversial hot take. I like a little bit of water, about two ounces in mine. You can leave this out if it offends your better nature. Finally, you'll need a glass, preferably a silver or a pewter beaker if you can get your paws on one. Now, I have a ton of derby glasses, which only seemed right. For our rum, we picked up a bottle from our favorite Richmond distiller of ours, Trial and Error. Thanks, guys. As with our punch video, I'd like to welcome Mitch Oxford, who has bravely agreed to once again assist with concocting a historic drink. All right, here goes. Muddle the mint leaves against the inside of your glass with a spoon, or a muddler if you're fancy, so that you can just smell the mint. Consider adding a little bit of granulated sugar here. That'll help rough up the mint a bit. Add your simple syrup. I usually give it a good stir here, and then blasphemously, I add those two ounces of water. Fill the glass halfway with your crushed ice and pour the rum and brandy over the ice. Stir until the glass starts to frost over. This might either A, take a while, or B, depending on your type of glass, not actually happen, but it's really pretty when it does. Now all you have to do is garnish with an excessively large mint sprig. So, put on your best hat and your most obnoxious spring clothes and take a little sip of history. Cheers! <laughs>